meet Streppies the Mongoose. She's not only a survivor, but one heck of a fighter. She definitely bosses the dogs around. Her relentless attitude toward life is what's allowed her to thrive, but it's her grit and resourcefulness that's kept her alive. At only a few months old, Streppies had somehow lost her family and wandered right up to a local farmer. It's very unusual for them to walk up to a human being. I've never heard of it before. Most of the times they are found, you know, they're found injured or they're found as babies. They make a big noise because they scream for their mothers. So that's how people find them. But they, I've never heard of one walking up to people and wanting to be picked up. She did the right thing at the right moment. Streppy's bold nature was on display right off the bat. And it's aided her here at Zuri Animal Orphanage in Namibia. She adapted to Zuri life very easy. She's very intelligent and she's just an absolute unique little character. Now the animals here are usually released back into the wild once they're old enough to make it on their own. But Streppies won't be going anywhere. Wild mongooses live in big social troops with an average of 20 family members. But you kind of got to be born into them. No new members in these clubs. It's so difficult for mongooses because they can't just join another troop. They have to be in their troop for all their life. So instead of a proper troop, it's Erica who keeps company with Streppies. And as you can see, it's not always a walk in the park. When we put our shoes on in the morning, she will run and bite our toes. She really thinks this is a great game. Mongooses make terrible house guests, and they're full of energy. Streppies needs well-rounded companions. They've got to be big enough to protect her from predators, enjoy being out all day, and can deal with her bossy attitude. Hmm, these sheep, Baki and Jellybean, might fit the bill. One day, the brave little mongoose made her move toward an unorthodox friendship. How could she win their hearts? The best way a mongoose knows how. Free grooming sessions. Mongooses are master groomers, picking off the parasites that bug their pals. And while her new besties are foraging for foliage, Streppies goes after her own snack to dine on. But she's not into leaves. She's got a spicier appetite. Wild mongooses feed mainly on high-protein beetles and millipedes, but they'll tackle most invertebrates, like scorpions. It's got a deadly stinger in the back, and growing up on her own, Streppies didn't get many lessons in how to tackle these bad boys. But Streppies don't care. She was born to take on anything, remember? The one thing I've learned from having Streppy is to realize what a ferocious predator she is. They're not scared of scorpions at all. They see it, they eat it, they destroy it. With two best friends by her side and daily foraging trips to look forward to, it appears this little mongoose has it made. It's not something that I put together. She found the sheep on her own and they found her. They found each other. They just accept her and she just walks with them. I think they just see each other as a small little herd or a small little troop. I love watching them. I think it's the greatest thing on earth to have this interaction between these odd couple animals. Seriously, is there anything better? Nah. A family of mongoose and a meerkat. The animals are related and they even kind of look alike but they'd never live together in the wild. So what gives? Well, let's start with Cameron, the meerkat. Destined for life as the odd one out, she's actually become the odd one in. When she was only six months old, Cameron and a mate were brought here from a wildlife rescue that had run out of room. They were to be released on a private reserve, but sadly, her mate died, leaving Cameron all alone. There were no other meerkats to keep her company, but there were five mongooses of a similar age. Could their similarities outweigh their differences? Meerkats, like banded mongoose, are highly social animals, and their survival depends on being social. She grew up with the original five mongoose that we had, so she is part of the family, a little bit the odd member of the family, but member of that family. 
I mean, come on, who doesn't have a weird aunt in the family? But every now and then, that aunt finds a way to shine. For Cameron, that's usually around mealtime. For the mongoose fam, food's priority number one, but veggies won't cut it. Fleshy worms, grubs, and insects are on the menu. Hey, a dead bat, bonus. But while the rest of the clan are digging in, Cameron has a job to do. She's the sentry, or the lookout. Meerkats live in open desert areas where predators, particularly birds of prey, are a constant danger. So someone is always on guard duty. To allow the group to eat in peace, the sentry must be on high alert. Looking out for her family is what Cameron was made for, even if they happen to be of a different species. Bellies fully loaded, the family is ready to move on. It's a grab-and-go type breakfast for our little lookout, but she's cool with that. After all that eating comes, you guessed it, dozing. And when it gets hot, post-meal naps turn heavy. So Cameron's still on the clock. Oh geez, getting sleepy. Lucky for her, the mongooses begin to stir. Finally, Cameron can take a break. Now awake and full of energy, next on the agenda, fun. Play bolsters the bonds between family members. Even though she's exhausted, Cameron can't resist getting in on the action. And there's an added benefit to all this close physical contact, scent sharing. Every member of the family has the same smell, helping them identify one another. Even in Cameron's case, her mongoose brothers and sisters don't see or smell her as a meerkat, she's simply one of them. She even steps in as the babysitter from time to time. See, Cameron's been one of the family for six years, and in that time, her mongoose family members have multiplied from five to 50. Banded mongooses typically help each other raise kids, and so Cameron's got her little hands full. But it's a small price to pay to be everyone's favorite aunt. Cameron doesn't have youngsters of her own, so she can help other mongoose to raise their children. If there wouldn't be for the mongoose, she wouldn't have a family. So she gets what she actually needs as a highly social animal. She has a family, this is a surrogate family, but in her eyes, I suppose, it's perfect. She might speak with a meerkat accent, but she thinks she is a mongoose. And they consider her as being part of the family. Guess the moral of the story is, if it kinda looks like family, and kinda smells like family, and heck, if it puts in the work to help feed the family, well then, that's what you call family.